Thank you, and I'm going to try to do that in English with my nice accent so everybody can understand what I'm saying. Um, first, I want to thank the French Institute for inviting me, uh, taking me out of my bureaucratic duties, which was very nice. And also, because I'm not, as my friend and colleague Alan told me a few days ago, I'm not an heritage person. I mean, I, I do not work on heritage or patrimoine in French. I work on local politics, local identities, local territorial constructions. But what happened to me is this. This is, of course, a metaphor because I, I, I'm not neither a very walking person. But I happen to have encountered nostalgia and the presence of the past in the present in all my field work and in all what I was reading. Of course, it's a global phenomenon, nostalgia. We are, we are uh, in this globalization period, in this postmodern condition. Nostalgia is extremely present, extremely important, uh, said to be postmodern because uh, the less we have expectations in the future or the more the future becomes uncertain, probably the more we have nostalgia from the past. So this is a global thing. But this is also a very South African thing, I think, now, uh, in 2011, in 2011, which means sometimes after the end of apartheid. And you probably have in South Africa at the moment already layers of nostalgia. And you also have a very specific situation, which is a nostalgia, which is a, a problematic nostalgia, which has been very well illustrated by Jacob Dlamini in a recent book, which is called Native Nostalgia. How do you deal with good memories of a past which is not a good past, which is apartheid past? What, what, what do you do with normal life and happy memories uh, which, which took place in a political and social context which was oppression, uh, racism and so on? So my, my, my positionality is this. Uh, I may be victim of uh, illness, which is, which is nostalgia, because the origin of nostalgia is an illness. So, so uh, therefore, I try to legitimate my nostalgia by working on nostalgia, starting working on nostalgia. So I want to warn you about this, this very specific position. I think, and I think it was very apparent in, in the presentation we heard today, one central question um, if we talk of memories or, in, or when we talk of nostalgia, is the relation between space and time. So what I'm going to try to do is a, a short, uh, short um, general theoretical introduction, the proposition of a new and funny and maybe useful concept, and then, and then coming to my case study. And uh, I have 20, 20 minutes I should not have more time than the other speakers. There is no reason for that. Um, so, space and time. And I love this quotation, which is totally out of context, which is Franklin Delano Roosevelt in 1943, which is in, during the Second World War. And it was about the war, and it was something to, to motivate. Um, uh, we have lost ground. We have lost, and you replace the word ground by the word space. We have lost space. Never mind, we can reconquer, recon, 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 uh, we, we can, we can, okay? But, but lost time never. And I think this, this, is, this is very, this illustrates very well these general ideas we have. Time, is, time flows and space stays, which I think is totally untrue. I think, I think you don't go back to past space. You don't go back for a diversity of reasons. Space do change. S you change. Self, myself is changing. I cannot, I cannot go back. So lost space can never be regained as lost time can never be regained. And in a way, it's exactly the same, the same thing because the, lost, the past space was in a past time. And somebody is saying... Somebody is saying something similar, which is, which, who is a geographer like me, David Harvey, but 
It's always useful to have a quotation of David Harvey. Uh, and he says the same thing. I mean, uh, there is this opposition between flow and, and, and physical immobility of space is a, is a real problem. And, it's, and the flow of time is materialized. Uh, somebody talked this morning of object objectivation of memories, objectivation of the past in a physical space. This is what he's talking about. So, so this, this, um, this difficulty of um, working at the same time on time, past time and past space is, is an issue and I think there is a lot of, of, uh, f a lot of m more of theoretical thinking to do around this, this, uh, this relation. So, I am more on the city, on the city side than on the memory side, usually. That's my position. So I'm, if I try to think what in the city is important for memories and for presence of the past, and, the, and I'm going to be extremely basic, cities do change. It's part of, of being a city, I mean, of the, of the nature of a city to, to change, which implies that city dwellers are confronted to change any type of change, decay, uh, destruction, uh, economic boom, uh, uh, movement in space, uh, migration, but the physical environment do change. But it doesn't change at the same pace in all parts of the city. So city dwellers are constantly confronted to sp space which has very recently been produced and to past space, which is still present, which can be large, extended, or which can be very small. And, and therefore, in the city, space and time are very strongly interrelated and intertwined. And because nostalgia, I think, is one of the possible reactions to change, nostalgia is therefore part of the urban experience. Maybe for, ex except for very, very young people. And maybe that grows with age. And maybe, okay. Uh, but but being a city inhabitant for a certain period of time is being confronted with change and so is maybe um, becoming nostalgic, not necessarily all the time, every minute of your day. But the diversity of nostalgia is extreme because you have different communities, different groups, different past. If you think of collective memories and also because of course you have as an unbelievable extreme uh, diversity of individual experiences. Micro closer, okay. I don't have time for the Stirtonville pub, so I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, so, nostalgia, when I, when I, I, I would like to, to try a, a very briefly a sort of categorization of what is nostalgia using the main authors I'm, I'm referring to in my own work, which, which is absolutely not exhaustive. I mean, there is a lot of, of literature on nostalgia and things, but just how, how do I um, manage with um, thinking of this diversity of nostalgia. The first, the basic, probably, is individual collective. You are confronted with individual people who have their past and their, and their relation to their past, with, which may be nostalgic. And then you have this collective memories relation to the past, okay, which that's group communities. We had a very good example uh, with the short talk which was given yesterday about Yeoville, where, where, when, we, when we saw very well this very diverse group on the same space with their diverse memories and diverse nostalgia. Then one, one very useful theory, uh, theoretical approach is, I think from, is, I'm, I'm sure it's her, but I think it's a very useful theoretical approach, is Vetlana Boim, which for me re wrote the recently the most uh, efficient, um, efficient book, I mean the efficient theory on nostalgia. And she distinguishes what she calls restorative nostalgia and reflexive nostalgia. She says, restorative is on the side of nostos. I want to go back, I want to return, I want to recreate the past. And it can be a very dangerous collective form of nostalgia, which is returning to an idealized uh, past. And what she calls reflexive nostalgia is just a sense of loss, but a sense of loss which is also a sense of ephemeral, ephemera, ephemerality. I mean, the feeling, the emotion, 
because nostalgia is an emotion. The emotion uh, which makes people realize that things do change. And that does not necessarily mean we want to go back to the past. She is working on cities in Eastern Europe. So what she says is very comparable in many ways to South African situation because she's working on cities who have been confronted to a brutal transformation, political and now very uh, physical transformation. Then I also use my favorite French writer who is Marcel Proust. And Marcel Proust is, I think, I think Marcel Proust is a serious uh, theorician on, on, on memories and past, okay? And he was probably one of the greatest nostalgic of all time. And he distinguishes, it's not really about nostalgia, but about memories. He distinguishes these two types of memories, voluntary memory, which is, he says, like, we look at pictures from the past, we look at old postcards, and we try voluntarily to reconstruct the past in our mind, and spontaneous or non-voluntary or involuntary memory, which is the sudden encounter, the reminiscence, the sudden encounter with something which reminds you brutally of the past. And you go back in time without having tried to do so. And of course, the famous, the famous event is the Madeleine de Proust, but I'm not going to elaborate on that. Thank you. Uh, for Juan, Henri Lefebvre. We can use some elements of Henri Lefebvre's trialectic of space, because of course we can think of some memories which are conceived, and conceived space of memor memor memories, of uh, eritalization. When, when it is an authority, when it is imposed from, from the top, when it's defined from the top of the society or of the city. And of course, the lived experience of, of city dwellers, we, we, which is a lived experience of memory, which is radically, and, and we, had, we had a few examples today. In the case of Paul, we have this contradiction, the, the conceived memory and the lived memory. And I think also it's a, it's a possible tool. And the last one is, what I call classic modern and postmodern nostalgia. The classic being exile, migrants. I mean, the fact, the original sense of nostalgia is you have been, uh, you have been moving from one place to another and you, and you long for the one you have left. This is typically the migrant. In South Africa, this is typically the forced removals, the effects of forced removals. I mean, you have been deported, moved, taken away from home, and, and, and so you have this is a classic form of nostalgia and regret, and you construct and you reconstruct that. Modern is, modern is a typical Baudelaire um, um, example, which is the city is changing rapidly and affected by this change. I react with, nost with nostalgia. And postmodern would be something like nostalgia for what has never been or for what I've never known. And this is the Apadurai uh, theory of this new postmodern feeling of nostalgia and also production, artificial production of nostalgia. Um, I will have an example of that a little bit later. Of course, I'm, I've, I've written politics and politics and policies because in all these different types of nostalgia, we have we can connect that to, 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 to a reflection on urban policies and to politics. Uh, of course, the Lefebvre one, it's clear that one side would be urban policies and the other side the, live, the life of city dwellers. Same thing, voluntary, spontaneous. Voluntary would, might be uh, the urban policy of memory, of mem, of uh, memory. I have a problem with that, of memorialization. And the spontaneous would be the city dwellers. I dream of a meeting between Marcel Proust and Henri Lefebvre to have this conversation. That would be fascinating. Uh, and quite the same with uh, Bohem. So this is, this, these are always political questions, political issues, and issues of, of urban policies. Herman Charles Bosman, which we, who was quoted as one of the temporary inhabitants of Yeoville where he killed his brother-in-law uh, in 1926. Uh, this text uh, dates back to 1956, the cask of joy. was published, was written obviously in the late 40s. And this is the nostalgia, individual nostalgia of uh, white 
man in South Africa in the 1940s. Just to say, this is not new. I mean, this is not only globalization, this is not only the uh, actual condition. One word, one word is important, and it's also very important in the, in the work of Svetlana Boim. In this quotation is the word sharing, I think. Because, of course, why is it so important to look at memories and to think of what's, what nostalgia has been? I, I think it is because it is something that can be shared by groups of people in a process of community building or community identification, or, or, or that might not be shared. And then you have conflicts, conflicts of, conflicts of memories. Ekuruleni is a place I do my research. It is quite easy if you work in Johannesburg, you say I work in Johannesburg, people know what you are talking about. If you say I work in Ekuruleni, often people say, what is that? This is, uh, this is uh, a part of the region of the, Wit of the Witwatersrand, which is east of Johannesburg, which is, uh, uh, which is at the moment um, a metropolitan authority. I'm not sure it is a city, but it's a metropolitan authority, which has been created in 2000 by the amalgamation of nine former municipalities. Uh, these nine former municipalities being themselves uh, amalgamation of apartheid period municipalities. So it's a complicated area. It's an interesting area which has very specific problems with memories, which is it dates back... I mean, the fact that, they, that these, these cities are put together dates back to 2000, so 10 years ago. So this city, in, in its policy around heritage, has this question, how do we create an heritage to something which has been very recently, extremely recently created? And what do we do with the past heritages of the former municipality of the old town? So this is just to... Just to, to to say what, this word about where I'm working, and this is, this is a museum, this is a, the Benoni Museum, which this was the Benoni Museum, because it has changed name uh, very recently. It is now the Oliver Tombo uh, Museum. Uh, this is, this is ex typically a Kuruleni, Kuruleni has, has two main political figures, Oliver Tombo, uh, which is also the name of the airport. If you come from foreign countries, you have been to Ecoroleni without knowing you were in Ecoroleni because the international airport of Johannesburg is Oliver Tambo Airport and it's in Ecoroleni. And the other, the other poli major political figure with a connection with Ecoroleni, the main collection being that he was assassinated there, is Chrisani, assassinated in 1993 um, in, in, um, in one of the suburbs of, um, of Ecoroleni. So when I was talking about politics and political dimension of memory. This is very strong in this production of identity and this looking at memories. And this is not only a public, um, public policy, this is also private policy. This is, the new, this is the new shopping mall in the township of Voslorus, which is one of the townships I'm, I'm, I'm working in. And it is called Chrisani Crossing. So this effort of creating this political memory heritage in Ecuroleni is, is, um, okay, is, is convergent between the political forces and the economic forces. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to run completely out of time. I'm, I mean, this is, this is terrible. This is my concept. This is the concept I want to propose now. This is a concept. Some of you might know. I just discovered it a few, a few, a few weeks ago. Thomason which in English I suppose you would pronounce Thomason. Thomason, yes? Okay. <laughs> uh, this, this is also a quotation from uh, Ivan Vadislavik. What is a Thomason? It is something which is the, the concept, I'm not going to elaborate, but I'm ready, I'm happy to discuss this, this uh, later on. The concept was created by Genpei Akasegawa, which was a Japanese artist of hyper art in the 70s. And the Thomason is something, an object, an urban object, which is left behind from the past. And most of the time, you don't know what it is. You don't know what it was there for. Like you walk in the street, and you see a stair, but no door at the top of the stair, nothing. You don't know where the stair goes. Uh, you walk in the street, you see a little pipe coming out of a, of a wall, and you don't know what it was. A small, small object. It was, it is useless. 
it is uh, left behind, it is part of a system, but the other components of this system have disappeared. Uh, it is accidental. It is maybe revolutionary because it is useless. It is not, you cannot commodify it, you cannot sell it, you cannot do anything with it. And, and some urban space, I think, are extremely um, productive of Thomasson. Thomasson's. And I think Ecurolini is one of these spaces. But Johannesburg also, because they are changing rapidly, and there are some objects forgotten behind. But I think the scale can be changed. I think we can feel of Thomasson at an, a completely different scale. I think a, an, old, an old area, an old suburb, and this is my case study in five minutes, which I think is a Thomasson. That's okay. Okay, we, you can use Michel de Certeau who had the same, the same kind of um, feelings that things present from the past, left behind, had a sense, had an importance, made the city human, made the city livable. Thomasson, Thomasson, uh, dump, a mind dump. When the mind disappears, when there is just a dump, it's, it, it's a Thomasson and it can become mysterious in a few, in a few years' time. This is, my, this is my field study, this is the area of comet. Okay. <laughs> this, uh, this is a former mine compound, but it's a small part in the, in the former municipality of Boxburg, so a few kilometers from Johannesburg. It is a small part of a former mine compound. It was the, the, the residences of uh, not the miners who were living in hostels, but employees of the mine who were uh, drivers, mechanicians, uh, the nurse, uh, uh, accountant, black people employed by the mine, but privileged compared to the miners because they had individual houses, they had their families there. They were migrants, they were migrants, uh, but they could stay for their all, all um, working time in, in, this, um, in this compound. Uh, fascinating things are happening, which is, since a few years there is no more mine, there is no more hostels, but there is a, this small compound, which is called Comet. And people are still living there. Not many people, it's, not, it's, a, it's, a, very, it's a very small, uh, very small suburb. It is... Um, okay, and, and people are nostalgic. Their discourse, they are immediately when you, when you go there and try to start discussing with people, they are, they are comet. Okay. I, I don't have to read this. Uh, in fact, I don't have to say anything. Okay, this, was, this, is, uh, this is the entrance of the area. The church. The church. And this ambiguity and this difficulty. We knew it was not the good system. We knew it was unjust. But, okay, we were happy. Everything was in the compound. A shop, a, a, a small medical facility, churches, school, you have seen the school. This is the old houses. This was my street I used to play here. You won't see the man. This one is nice. This is the community all in the compound. Happy memories. Happy memories of a bad system. Uh, last December, there was a large meeting in Comet, a large meeting of people who had made contact uh, through internet, through Facebook, through Twitter. Say. And it was a meeting of the former inhabitants of Comet and a large braai all Sunday to discuss of the past, to have this nice conversation. We were a community. We were, we were, uh, we were a community. Uh, people who are now in some very high position in some parastatals, some were, some were very, in very high position in the Metropolitan Authority. Large meeting, it was filmed on DVD. Was a DVD. It's fascinating. People discuss, they make speech of their past, of their past. I say, why, 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 why? Okay, I understand this was, this was a specific period. Why this nostalgia? What's happening? Why is there now a an association of the residents of this place, uh, which is also very exclusive because when they say things have changed, they also say things have changed because there are newcomers. 
and these newcomers are immigrants. They are foreign. They come from Zimbabwe and they are subtenant. The land is still mine property. The houses is mine property. So the rent is supposed to be paid to the mine, but there are subtenant, there are diversity of strategies of people who have moved out but kept the house and rent it out and often rent it out for more money than when they have to pay to the, to the mine. Okay. So why this nostalgia? And last, if I am suppose you're not often reading this newspaper, which is the Boxburg Advertiser, which is the local paper of Boxburg, very nostalgic paper because Boxburg does not exist anymore officially, but it's still the paper. Uh, and last week, it's reported in this paper, last week there was evictions of 12 families, 12 houses of Comet. Evictions by the police, by order of law, because the mine um, um, uh, is prosecuting people who do not pay. But they are evicted people who do pay, they are subtenant of official tenant who do not pay, so they are expelled. And, there is, and the situation since, a few, since one week is in complete, um, I mean, it's violent, it's tough, it's, it's people are outside and, and, and with, their, with their furniture, not in the hotel, but outside of the room. Okay. And this association of residents is obviously extremely nostalgic, and that doesn't, doesn't um, I have no intention of saying that their nostalgia is not real. I mean, that's not the problem, or, or, or is constructed of that. But it's part of it. It's part of a fight for controlling this space. Who is controlling this space? The mine, the old, authentic inhabitants who claim their autochtony. They say, we were the children of the people working in that mine, or we were ourselves employees, but most of children of the people working in the mine. The municipality, and that's why you invite this former resident of Comet, who, who is a top is member of the mayoral committee of the, of the metro. Can you do something for us? I know, that's a mine, that's private property. Okay, but it's good. And the, and the mine was this project because it's very close to Boxburg city center. So it, it, is, it is maybe a Thomasson which is not, which can become commodified, which can be commodified very, very easily, of course. Okay. And, and just to conclude, Thomasson, because it, it was, it, it's an object, it's an urban object, part of the system of the mine. And it's left alone. What do you do with this kind of spaces? <laughs>